Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install a Tusk Stage 3 upgrade kit on your Can-Am Maverick X3 Max. The Tusk Stage 3 upgrade kit is the most premium option out of the three kits, and it comes with some of our best-selling products to help fit your needs and make your new machine stand out and look good. So what comes in the kit is the full glass windshield, the pivot folding mirrors, the polycarb rear window, the cargo barricade, and the plastic lower door inserts. Now, all these products are really easy to install, so let me show you how. We're gonna start out at the rear window. So to get this thing ready, first thing I'm doing is wearing some gloves, that way I don't get fingerprints all over it. And then we're gonna remove the protective film from both sides. Now, one thing you'll notice is we've laid down a blanket and that way we avoid any damage to this rear window. Next, at the back of the machine, we're gonna clean off the back side of that roll bar right there. And we've got the foam tape. So this is gonna come with a little bit of extra length. We're gonna cut it to length and apply that to the back side of that. So we cut that right at 24 inches. Then we'll remove the backing and stick this down into place. Next, we're gonna set the rear window in place. So the Tusk logo, that's gonna go on the driver's side. And then this jagged section, that's gonna be facing down. And you might have to flex the rear window when you set this in place. Once it is in place, we can go ahead and take the hook and loop straps and we're gonna work those on one at a time. We'll leave them all loose and then we'll adjust them for final fitment and snug them down. Next, we're gonna install our mirror mounts. So we're at the upper front corner of the roll cage on both sides. We're actually gonna do the passenger side first. Now these mirror mounts are different from driver's side to passenger side. Driver's side is a straight mount. The passenger side is the mount with a bend to it. So we'll take that bracket, we'll take two of these bolts, we're gonna go through the bracket, and then we'll go through both of these pre-existing holes through the roll cage. After that, we'll install the washers and nylock nuts on the back. Now to get the mirrors installed, we're gonna remove the bolt in the end, and you're gonna to wanna to keep track of the star washer. Put the bolt in through the back side, install the star washer, and then thread the bolt into the mirror and should be pretty obvious which mirror is left and right. You're gonna be able to read the logo if you have the correct mirror on the correct side. Then once you have everything loosely mounted up, you can go ahead and tighten down all the hardware. Uh, the only reason we didn't tighten down that bracket before we installed that bolt is you're probably not gonna be able to get it in with that hardware tightened on top. Next, we're gonna install our windshield. So to get this ready, what we're gonna do is apply foam tape all the way around the perimeter everywhere except pour across this top section. So I'm gonna start in this corner and just work my way around. And we're gonna stop anywhere there's some bolt holes. We're gonna cut the tape and then start on the other side. Next, we're gonna assemble the vent brackets for the vent doors. So we've got bracket A, B, and C. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by grabbing one of the knobs. We're gonna attach bracket B to bracket A. So this bend in the knob, that's gonna be facing away from that mounting section on bracket A. And then we're gonna have a friction washer or that plastic washer in between those two brackets. And we're gonna leave all this stuff we're assembling loose for now. Then we're gonna attach bracket B to bracket C using the M6 by 16 millimeter bolt. So we'll go through bracket B first into C and those mounting holes for bracket C, those are gonna be facing away from the mounting holes on bracket A. And then to tighten this bolt down, we're gonna go until it lightly seats and then we're gonna back it off a quarter to a half a turn. So this is the left-hand bracket. We're gonna do the right-hand bracket next in the same way. And we'll install the M6 nylock nut on the back. Now we can place these on the inside of the windshield and get them mounted up. Just keep in mind, we've got these M5 bolts. Those are gonna go through the tops of these mounts. And then the M6 bolts are gonna go through the bottoms with the M6 nylocks. And these bolts, the butt and head side is gonna be on the outside of the windshield.
Once you have the hardware installed, you can go ahead and tighten it down. You wanna make sure that vent door op fully opens and closes. If it doesn't or if it binds up, you wanna loosen up the hardware and make adjustments. Next, we're gonna prep the clamp. So what we need to do, we're gonna remove the stock mounting bolt. We're gonna reuse the washer, but we won't reuse that stock bolt. We're gonna take both bolts out of the back Separate the clamp and remove that rubber strip. Next thing we're gonna do is take our block of wood. We're gonna lift up on the windshield. We need to access the upper holes and these ones on the sides. And then we're gonna take the clamps and we're gonna put four clamps in those mounting locations. Now the side clamps, what we're gonna do, we've got the M8 by 20 millimeter button head bolts. We're gonna take the washer we removed, put that on there, Stick that in through the front of the windshield, install a spacer, and then set the clamp on top. We're gonna to spin this on, and we're gonna leave all these clamps loose for now, but you want the clamp sitting just above that foam tape, just like that. So for the top, the clamp isn't gonna be facing outward. It's actually gonna be facing down towards the inside of the windshield. And we'll do those same steps for the other two mounting locations. Next, we're gonna prep the windshield wiper. So we've got the knob assembly. I'm gonna remove that smaller nut from it. Then we can remove the mount from the handle. And we're gonna remove one of these larger nuts, the washer and a grommet. And then we're gonna stick this through the hole that's gonna be closest to the driver. And you have the option to run a second windshield wiper if you want. Then we're gonna use our 17 millimeter open end wrenches to snug these nuts down. After that, we can stick the handle through. Next, we're gonna prep the windshield wiper and the wiper arm. So with this, the windshield wiper, it's got two tabs, one on each side. We're gonna pop this cover up. Then we've got the wiper arm. We'll stick that through the cover and hook it on to the wiper. And we can press that cover down into place. Now from the outside, you can line up the splines on this wiper handle with the splines in the wiper arm. I'm gonna flip the windshield over just to show you guys how to do that, but you should be able to do that in this position. And we're just gonna line up this wiper handle with the wiper arm. So once you have the splines lined up, you can reinstall that smaller nut and snug it down. We're just using a 10 millimeter socket to do that. And press the cover down into place. To get the windshield installed, we need to remove six T30 Torx bit bolts from the front of the dash. Now on the front of the dash, you'll notice there's two dimples. We've already drilled the outermost one out using a 3 8 inch drill bit. You need to go ahead and do that on both sides of your machine and then install the J nut right over that new hole. With that J-nut installed, we'll go ahead and do that same thing on the other side. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and reinstall all six fasteners across the top of the dash. We're almost ready to set the windshield in place, but before we do that, we're gonna do one last thing. We need to flip these brackets up so they're in the correct position for the roll cage. And so they stay up, I'm just gonna lightly snug down that bolt just enough to keep them there, but to where it can still move around. Now that we have the wiper blade installed, we're gonna to move to the front of the machine. We need to raise the front of the roof. So we have two of these quick releases on each side, and then you've got the Velcro straps in the middle. We'll undo those, and then there's two hooks on the bottom side of the roof. We're gonna press up on those hooks and pop this up out of the way. Once you have the windshield in place, loosely install the clamps on the back, and then we're gonna install the two M6 by 25 millimeter bolts with the washers through the front of the windshield into those J nuts we previously installed. Once everything's loosely installed, you can make your final adjustments, tighten all the hardware down, and reinstall the roof. Next, we're gonna install our cargo barricade. So we need to get this ready first, and what we're gonna do is 
this protective trim. We're gonna attach this to this rear section on the inside of the cargo barricade. And if there's any spots that don't fit tight, you can always pinch this tighter together. And if you have any extra material, you can just cut that off. Next, we're gonna install the mounting brackets. So you'll notice on the mounting brackets, there's two longer slots and two shorter slots. So the longer slots are gonna line up with the bolt holes in the barricade itself. Now, the other thing, the left-hand side and right-hand side, you're just gonna match it up by the angle that's in the bracket itself. After that, we'll take these button head bolts. We're gonna insert the bolt from the outside through the bracket, and then we'll install the nylock nut on the inside. And all this hardware, we're gonna leave it loose until we have everything mounted up on the machine. Now that we have the cargo barricade prepped, we need to get the machine ready for installation. So we need to gain access to some hardware. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the cover over that exhaust. Now we have access to the nylock nuts that are on the back sides of these bolts going straight down through the back of the bed. So I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter combo wrench to hold that nut while I use the T30 Torx bit to remove the bolt. Make sure you keep track of this hardware. We are gonna reuse it. Now we can set the cargo barricade in place, reinstall the bolt and the nylock nut on the back side. And we're gonna leave those loose for now so we can make adjustments. Next, we're gonna use a T20 and T30 Torx bits to remove the four bolts holding the tail lights in place. We'll disconnect those and move them out of the way. Next, we're gonna tighten down all of the hardware that we have installed. Now, keep in mind, while you tighten down the hardware, you wanna make sure that the brackets on both sides of the barricade are flush with the plastic in the bed. The next step is to mark the holes you're gonna be drilling for the brackets. But as you can see, we've already done that on ours. We've had this installed before, but for you guys, you're just gonna use a paint pen or a Sharpie, mark right in the center of those holes on both sides. And then you're gonna remove this bracket and use the quarter inch drill bit to drill those mounting locations out. After that, we can reinstall our bracket and we're gonna add the hardware that goes through the cargo bed. So that's your M6 button head bolt. You've got a washer on the back side, and then a nylock nut. And then we can do the same steps for the remaining locations. Then we can make any final adjustments, tighten down the hardware, reinstall both tail lights, and install the exhaust cover. The last thing we're gonna install is the lower door inserts. We're gonna install the lower door insert for the passenger front door first. And we're just gonna use these three bolts that come with the door. And then you've also got a threaded nut insert we're gonna put in this back one. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove these bolts. So we'll line up the holes in the stock door frame with the slots in that lower door insert. I'm gonna start in the middle. We've got the nylock nut on the bottom. We'll do the same thing on the front. And then on the back, we're gonna use that same bolt, the collar, and then on the bottom, you're gonna use the silver threaded nut. And then from here, we're gonna tighten these down, but just tight enough to where we can move the door panel back and forth still. So with this lower door panel loosely installed, we're gonna shut the door and make final adjustments. So if you can shut the door and you have a good seal all the way around, you've got the lower door insert in the correct spot so you can go ahead and tighten down the hardware. Now for the rear doors, it's gonna be a slightly different process, but again, we're gonna start out by removing both bolts that are hanging down. We'll set the door insert in place and we're gonna start with that middle bolt. Line that up, install the nylock nut. Then in the back corner, we're gonna take one of the bolts from the hardware kit. This is the shorter bolt that comes in there. We're gonna go through that J nut. And again, all of this hardware is gonna be slightly loose until we make our final adjustments. Then we have one of these longer bolts that came in the hardware kit. We'll install the collar. We'll go through that mount in the rear and we're using the silver nut on the bottom.
And then from here you have a couple options. So the door is gonna be pretty solid if you just run it like this. So you can go ahead and close it and line everything up and tighten these bolts down. Or you also have the option, if you wanna remove this cover, you can drill out these three plastic rivets, pull that cover off, and there's a bolt that goes through the front. Just keep in mind, the kit doesn't come with new rivets. So if you wanna reuse this cover, you're gonna to have to source them. So for us, we are going to use that bolt in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. With the cover out of the way, we can install that longer bolt with the collar and nylock nut. After that, we can shut our door and make our adjustments, then tighten down the hardware. This bolt in the back is a five millimeter. From here, we can do those same steps on the other side. And that's how you get the Tusk Stage 3 Upgrade Kit installed on your can Maverick X3 Max. Again, it's pretty simple to do. If you have any questions about the install process, leave those questions down in the comments. And if you need this kit, you can pick one up on our website. And if you want to see more helpful content for your Can-Am, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.